hello again, this is Rod Ward from Info Semantics, and today I'm going to show you a couple of features that are built into my Info Semantics template that I've been introducing you to in, in a couple of the past tutorials. So let's just dive right in and I want to show you the areas that we're talking about here. You can easily see them from the first couple of slides in this project. So here I have a project file that's based on my template, and I'm just looking here at one of the title slides in the course intro section course intro module there. Um, just turn that off. And what I have down the bottom is a system, or it's a variable, not a system variable, it's a custom variable. You can tell by the two uh, dollar signs in front of it and behind it that I've actually inserted this variable here. It's called time module duration minutes. And the role of this variable is simply to show you on the very first slide how long the module runs for. That's a good idea from a number of perspectives in that when a person is loading up the module for the first time, they would probably want to know, how long is this going to take me? You know how learners want to know, how long is this going to take me? Are we there yet? And the famous words that children often say. So they want to know how long is, have they got to allow for this e-learning module? So if you tell them right up on the, on the title slide, that's a good thing. That will help them to know, oh, okay, so it's only a few minutes or it's 15 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is. They can allocate that block of time in their mind to concentrate on the lesson. And then if I go down a couple more slides, say down to this one here, you might see just down on the, the bottom of this slide, I'll just magnify that a little bit, there's another variable built into this slide called time current date long. So in this particular case, the request was that we put on each of the slides what the current date is that the user is actually performing that um, e-learning lesson or is, is participating in that training course. You would also find this kind of a, a user variable quite useful later on if you wanted to create your own custom certificate, completion certificate for the user and you want to put on that completion certificate somewhere what the actual date was and rather than put it in some cryptic format, perhaps a short date format that you don't know if it's European format or if it's American format, being able to put a long date format that means there's no ambiguity about what the date actually is, that's a good idea as well. Now Captivate over time has improved in the date variables that it gives you with system variables, but there's still quite a few that are missing and quite a lot of formats that Captivate doesn't come with out of the box. So what I did with the template is build my own date formats and I'll show you how that's actually done. So if I just uh, go up here to my project variables and pull up the variables dialog and just scroll down to towards the bottom you'll find there are quite a number of variables they all start with the word time time current date long time current date long US time current date medium etc medium US format as those of you who work with dates and maybe do uh, work for clients in other countries would know the US uses a slightly different date format to um, European formats or here down in Australia, for instance. So if you're working for US clients, they expect to have the US date format. Now these variables can be populated with data from advanced actions, and that's what I've chosen to do. So I'll just close that and take you up to the project advanced actions menu, and we'll pull up the advanced actions dialog and show you the actual advanced action that builds these date formats. It's right down the bottom and it's called time set date vars or set date variables for short. So when that comes up you'll see how these, date, these dates are built. It's not that complex and you, if you find that the, the variables that are in there are not populated with data you can easily modify this particular advanced action to create the date you want. So First of all, it starts off with looking at the months. If you look at the decision blocks up here, you'll see we're going through January, February, March, all the way through to December. And then we start on the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc., all the way through to Saturday. And then finally, at the end, we have short date, medium date, long date in the decisions, and finally, the module duration. So let's just go back to the beginning, go back to the first one, and just figure out what's happening here. So January... CP info current month is a Captivate system variable that tells you what the current month is as an integer, as a, a number. So January equates to the number one. 
in Captivate. CP info current date month, if that's equal to one, then we're in January. So down here in the actions, my custom user variables that I've created, I have one for the current month medium format. So I, I set that value to Jan, if it's January. If current info month, you know, CP info current month is one, I set that to Jan. And if it's here current info month long, that would be January. You do that for all of the months. So current info month is equal to two, that would be February. If it's three, that's March, etc., all the way through to December, which is 12. And so the current month medium format is DEC for December. Current month long is the full word December. Then you start on the days of the week. Now, as far as Captivate is concerned, the first day of the week is Monday. So CP info current day is another Captivate system variable. And if that's equal to one, then it's Sunday. So down in my, in my custom user variables, now I assign the, the value of time current day medium with sun and time current day long format with Sunday. And we go through all of the days of the week that way. If it's equal to two, it's Monday. If it's equal to three, it's Tuesday, etc. So we're building up our, our date variables, our custom variables using this particular advanced action. Just looking at the, the Captivate system variables and then building those into some kind of a format that's useful for building out other medium and long date formats. So when we get down to the short date format, we can just take our pretty much our current um, variables for short date and concatenate them together with some spaces, as it were. So all we really need to put in there is a string separator for the uh, what separates the day from the month from the year. So we have a, a user variable I've created here for the string separator. And you can make that into uh, a backslash if you want, or you might prefer to use a hyphen, or you might prefer to use a colon, or whatever is the way that you prefer to display dates. You just set that variable, you change the value of that variable to whatever you want it to be, and then it will build it in this particular advanced action. The medium date, very similarly, you've got the, um, the separators that you can add in there as well. There is a little trick though that's built in here. Sometimes you want to have a, a comma. You might want to have the day as in Sunday and then comma space and then the month, September or whatever. Now, how do you do that? Because in Captivate, when you try, if you've ever tried to put in some of these spaces, you'll find often Captivate truncates them, cuts them off. The trick here is to use a variable to have that space embedded in the variable as a value and put the variable in as a concatenation. And that then enables you to build the date. So if you look at the way that I've done these, you'll see how that's actually done. And finally, our long date format, which is a little bit more complex, as you'll notice, it has more lines. We're all using expression actions for these ones because that's the only way that you can concatenate things here in Captivate to build up something. And you need multiple expressions to keep adding the parts of the date as you go down through the lines. Finally, you get down to the bottom and you're adding the year on tacked onto the end of the, the long date format and it comes out the way you want. So this particular one might not be building your US date format. You might need to move them around a little bit to get your US date format and then set that uh, as another, another user variable if you want. I've just done this one mainly for the European format because my clients are here in Australia and uh, they all use the European format, not the US date format. We'll just show you the last little decision block in this particular advanced action is for building the module duration. Remember, our title slide told the user how long the duration of the module would play for. Now, how is that figured out? Well, once again, we're using Captivate's system variables. There is a system variable called CP info frame count that counts the number of frames, total frames in the entire project. And there's another one called CP Info FPS or frames per second that knows how many of those frames take up one second. So if you divide the one variable by the other one and assign that value using the expression to a custom variable, you will get the total number of seconds in the project at, at runtime. You can then just divide the total number of seconds by 60 using another expression and get the total number of minutes. Now there's just one little gotcha in all of this and that Captivate, when it divides one thing into another here, it does it always with two decimal values. 
regardless of whether you need those decimal values or not. So you might just want it rounded to the nearest number of minutes or the nearest number of seconds. Captivate doesn't know how to do rounding as yet. So we're hoping that that would be another enhancement that will come one day in the future. So at the end of all of this, what do we end up with? Well, I'll just publish this project. Just hit Control Enter to quickly generate a published version so we can see what this comes out like. So, so here we are with the title slide. And I'll just pause it there so that you can see down the bottom we have the duration set as 5.68 minutes. Now the 68 is obviously not seconds because if it was 68 seconds it would be another minute. Um, but this 68 is actually 0.68 of a minute if you like, a little bit over half a minute. As I said, Captivate doesn't do rounding as yet, so that might be something that you might find objectionable, I'm not sure. So far, no one's objected to it when I, I've used it in my projects. If we just go a little bit further, just to another slide, notice now down the bottom of this slide, I have the long date displayed to show exactly when the user is doing this particular project. Now, you don't have to display it on every slide as I've chosen to do here. You might just want that long date to be used later on in some other part where you're building a certificate slide or something like that. But having the ability to put in dates in any format that you want, generate them on the fly using system variables in Captivate is very, very handy. And I encourage you to open up the template and have a look at how that's done. Study that advanced action. If you don't understand it, um, give me a, send me an email or a note on, on the post here if you, if you want to ask a question about it. I hope that's been useful to you and thanks for listening. Thank you.